welcome to the Lair of the Film Exorcist. But like last time, before we start, go ahead and tell me down in the comment section below what your favorite animal is. Personally, I'm a huge fan of penguins, especially with how cute they look, and since they're the only bird that slides on its stomach, which I've always found very cool. Cause tonight, we will be taking a look at kimono friends. In the large animal park named Jaffrey Park, Animals have lived in the shape of human girls by the power of mysterious substances called Sandstar. However, Jeffrey Park has started to dilapidate from time unknown. One day, a human child of amnesia gets lost in Jeffrey Park. The child goes on a journey to find the child's way home with the help of animal girls and they learn why Jeffrey Park was dilapidated during their journey. Now on to my opinion. The show has a lot of mixed reviews, especially when people weren't that friendly towards the 3D look of the characters, and many even refused to continue watching, but there were still those few that continued for the great story and fun characters. And also, this show got a lot of recognition when a well-known penguin named Grapecoon fell in love with one of the show's characters during a promotion. Rest in peace, Grapecoon. You are one of the best otakus out there and may you live on in all our hearts. Now, this anime was created by Studio Yayarozu, who honestly I have never heard of before, and Kimono Friends is definitely the first one I've seen from them. And it was written by Tatsuki, who did most of the work for this show, which is pretty amazing. So is this a bad show, or is there so much more beyond the art? Let's check it out. Now the out... Now the opening is really great, especially with how cheerful the song sounds, ultimately making me want to visit the fictional world of Jaffrey Park. And it kind of reminded me a bit of Dora the Explorer's theme song, which did bring back a lot of nostalgia. And similar to Cautious Hero, the show changes its intro after each time we meet a new animal, which just like in that anime, I really enjoyed this little trick and would always find myself looking for the new animal. Now the outro on the other hand is a lot more calm, which for this anime does work after you've watched Kanabe and Serval go on their little adventures and actually the song is about friendship so it does go with one of the themes of the show. And also if you watch closely. You can also see some of the characters' outlines on the buildings, which I found was pretty cool when I finally saw it the second time I listened to the outro. So yeah, I really enjoyed the music of this show and the amazing intro and outro. Next, we have the characters who, like most people, actually caught me off guard when I first started watching the show, because the way they moved was so weird, but you tended to get used to it after a few of the scenes and you focus more on the personalities of the friends. Starting with Kaban, the only human in the show that isn't shown by a hologram, and we also follow her journey as she tries to find out what species she is, and no offense, but originally I almost mistook her for the Japanese version of Dora for her design, which is pretty funny, but really she was a pretty enjoyable main character because she's the literal representation of humanity and how resourceful we can be when we take the time to plan things out and use tools to make up for the shortcomings. And she was also a big reason for why I was so interested in the show. Next, we have Serval, who is the human version of the animal of the same name, which means she's very energetic and playful, but also a bit clumsy, and she's a very caring friend, when it comes to Kaban and the rest of the friends. And she's easily amazed by a lot of the new tools and ideas that Kaban comes up with. So yeah, like Kaban, she's a really good character. Now the rest of the characters usually have their own episodes. And like Serval, they're just like their real world, real world versions. And actually, I really like the episode about Triple P which focuses a lot on the relationships between the five penguins and how their insecurities make them special. Matt and I just really love penguins, so this episode was perfect for someone like me. Finally, we have the story, which has been said to be the best part of the show, and ultimately, I agree. 
especially when we get the explanation for some of the animals during the commercial breaks. And actually, these got me interested in looking up more facts about some of the animals, so it did its job well. And it made me feel like I was in an actual zoo for most of the time, which was pretty cool. Now again, like most, I wasn't too fond of the 3D graphics because I've always been used to the 2D characters that you see in anime. But during this show, it actually gave the story more charm in how well they moved. But it's time to get back to the story. Now, the whole thing revolves around our characters as they try to find out what Kaban is and then finding where her species lives, which sadly only one of these questions were answered and the other was left alone when Katakawa decided to remove Tatsuki from the project altogether and gave the second season to a different studio who turned it into somewhat of a reboot, which I don't plan on reviewing anytime soon, but I am glad that we all at least got this wonderful first season to watch over and over again. So yeah, despite the interesting choices of making this 3D show, making this a 3D show, I really enjoyed watching and I wish there was more, which I, which is why I'm giving it a 9.8 out of 10 for the cute characters and the great story structure. And I'm recommending this to anyone looking for something different from your usual anime and if you're a fan of the show Ruby. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and we'll see you guys.